Hello everybody, my name is Sebastian van der Velde and in this Touch Plus video series I will explain what you need to know to get started with Pixelmator. In this first video we are going to launch Pixelmator, create a new image and get more familiar with the Pixelmator workspace. We will also take a look at how we can adjust some of the Pixelmator settings in the preferences. So let's start Pixelmator and have a look around, shall we? The first time we launch Pixelmator, we are presented with the Welcome to Pixelmator window, from where we can choose to create a new image, open an existing image, or if we have launched Pixelmator before, open an image we've worked on recently. Let's create a new image. A new window pops up, letting us choose some settings for the new image. We can choose from a range of presets that are available by default. The numbers you see are the dimensions of the image in pixels. Pixels are the tiny dots each image is made of. If you feel more comfortable with centimeters or inches, you can change the units by clicking on where it says pixels and choose for example centimeters. You will now see that our preset of, in our case 800 by 600 pixels, is transformed in 28 by 21 centimeters. This is calculated with the help of the image resolution which is the number you'll see at the bottom of the window. This says by default 72 pixels per inch, which means that each inch of our image is filled with 72 pixels. We can increase the resolution, and if you are thinking about printing your images on paper, you most certainly want to increase the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. When we do this, you see that the width and height of our image in centimeters stays the same, but that the preset is changed to custom. When we now change back from centimeters to pixels, you will see that the 800 by 600 pixels we had before have now changed to 3300 to 2500 pixels, as a result of the higher resolution we've requested. Now I'm going to work on an image that will be published on the web, so I'm satisfied with a 72 pixels per inch resolution and I will choose the 800 by 600 from the default presets. Note that a better explanation of what all the presets do can be retrieved when we click on the little gear icon over here, and then choose Manage Presets. Here you see the presets arranged in the sections Display, Web, Photo, Print and others. You will also see that for Print and Photo, the standard resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch. In this view we can also add custom presets by clicking on the plus icon and removing presets by clicking on the minus icon. Be careful though with the last one. You are able to delete the standard presets that Pixelmator ships with. Let's click OK and open our new image. We are now presented with the workspace that we will spend most of our time in. You see that Pixelmator consists of a set of floating palettes and windows. The main window being the image we work on which is called for the document window. To work on a document, we need tools, and these tools can be found in the tools palette over here. Tools you see here are not all the tools that are available in Pixelmator. The tools palette is customizable. We can go to the Pixelmator preferences by clicking on the Pixelmator menu and choosing preferences. Now we click on the tools icon. What happens now is that we can adjust the tools palette to our liking. We can drag a corner of the tools palette further down to create more space for new tools. From the preferences window, we can choose from the painting section the pixel tool and drag it onto an empty spot in the tools palette. You now see that Pixelmator will create extra space for us to add new tools. We can also combine tools, so let's drag the hand tool from the basic section on top of the zoom tool in the tools palette. When we release the mouse button, a little triangle will appear next to the zoom tool. When we close the Pixelmator preferences, the tools palette becomes active again, and when we now click and hold the mouse button on the zoom tool, you will see that we get to choose between the hand and the zoom tool. For now and for the sake of this course, we're better off letting the tools palette be in its default state. If you want to make sure your tools palette is the factory default palette, Go to the Pixelmator preferences again by choosing Pixelmator from the menu bar. Click on the tools icon and choose reset. We get a warning about the tools palette being reset to its default state, and since we want this to happen, we of course click on the reset button to confirm. 
You can take a quick look through all the tools here as well by browsing through the categories. As you see, there are a lot of tools available in Pixelmator. Let's close the preferences for now and return to our overview of the workspace. The next palette that is very important is the Layers palette. When we created our new document, we have created one new layer by default, which is the default white background layer. We can add new layers if we want by hitting the plus icon and of course delete layers as well by hitting the minus icon. We can also blend layers together in many different ways. And this we will get into at a later stage of this video series. The third palette we want to have open most of the time, if not all times, is the effects browser. In the effects browser, we'll find an incredible amount of filters and effects that we can add to our layers. Also the basic image adjustment tools like desaturating, brightness and contrast, and exposure adjustments can only be accessed from the effects browser. To get a glimpse of all palettes that Pixelmator has in store, we can click on the view menu. Here we'll find palettes like the brushes palette, the gradient palette, and the shapes palette. Notice that all palettes can be quickly switched on and off by holding the command key and choosing one of the numbers 1 to 6. All these Pixelmator palettes and windows can quickly become crowded, especially if you have other apps open on the same desktop as well. Pixelmator can be set to full screen mode, which reduces a great amount of the clutter and lets you focus better on Pixelmator itself, without getting distracted by other apps. Click on the double arrow icon in top of the right corner of the document window, or we can choose full screen from the view menu. We can also hit the key combination Ctrl Command plus F. By default, the background in full screen mode is black. If you want to change this, simply Ctrl click on the black background and choose another color like grey or white. You will also notice that the menu bar disappears, but don't worry, it will reappear when we move the mouse pointer to the top of the screen. Here we can also close full screen mode again by clicking on the blue double arrowed icon. We can also press the escape key, hit Ctrl Command F again, or go to the view menu and choose exit full screen. Now let's do a little bit of work with Pixelmator. I'm going to open a new Pixelmator document for us. As you see, it consists of several layers. Each layer contains an object that I have cut from the original image and placed to the right. Let's activate the Move tool by clicking on the arrow icon over here. At the top of the document window, there is a bar called the Tool Options bar. If you don't see this bar, please go to the View menu and choose Show Tool Options. The Tool Options bar for the Move tool has only one icon and that is the gear icon. When we click on it, a menu appears with different settings. We will go into the settings later on. For now, make sure that Auto Select is activated. When Auto Select is activated, we can click on each object in the document window and Pixelmator will select the layer this object is on automatically. If we wouldn't have activated Auto Select, we would first have to select a layer from the layer's palettes, which corresponds to the object we want to move, and then we could have moved the object. Let's click on the text. Hold the mouse button and drag our text around. Now try to position it in the center of the document. Depending on what is set in the Pixelmator preferences, you might get presented with alignment guides that will let you know when the text is centered on the document or centered or aligned with other objects in the scene. If you don't see these guides, don't worry. We'll be going back to the Pixelmator preferences and show you where you can find these settings. So again, let's get back to the Pixelmator preferences by choosing Preferences from the Pixelmator menu. Let's choose the Ruler section. In the Ruler section, we find all the settings that have to do with measuring and aligning. We can make the ruler bars visible by pressing Command plus R or by choosing Show Rulers from the View menu. When we now go back to the Pixelmator preferences, we see that we can set the units for the ruler bars. So our current document has pixels as the unit. We can change it to percent for example. And we don't need to go to the Pixelmator preferences every time we want to change the ruler units. We can also control click on the ruler bars itself and choose a different unit from the drop down menu.
When we go back to the drop-down menu, you see the option to make a new guide. Guides in Pixelmator can be used to precisely place objects inside the document. We can click on the New Guide option to create a new guide. Here we can choose between a horizontal or vertical guide and where we want to place it. Let's place a vertical guide precisely at 70% of the document. So we make sure vertical is selected and we position the guide at 70% by changing the units and clicking on OK. Our guide gets placed exactly where we want to. A quicker way to place a guide is by clicking on the ruler bar and dragging towards the center of the document. Release the mouse button when the guide is in place. Let's take the move tool from the tools palette again and make sure to select the text layer by clicking on it in the layers palette or by clicking on the text itself. You see which layer is selected in the layers palette by the blue color. Click and drag the text around and you will notice that it will snap on various places to the guides. This makes it much easier to align different items in our document. Let's try to center the text on the 70% guide. When we control click on the ruler bars again, we get extra options for our guides. We can hide them temporarily, we can lock them so we don't accidentally move them, and we can remove them entirely by choosing clear guides. Another way of removing guides is dragging them outside of the document window like this. We drag them outside of the document window, and when we release the mouse button, poof, they disappear. Let's get back to the preference window because we have some settings here to customize how our guides behave and display. First of all, we can choose a color for our guides by clicking on the color stop over here, and then you see that the OS X color picker pops up, and we can choose a new color for our guides from there. If you previously didn't see any guides when moving the text around for the first time, then this is because the setting here, called Show Guides at Object Center, wasn't activated. If we activate it, you'll notice that when we move our text around again, guides will pop up whenever we have positioned our text exactly in the middle of a document or in the middle of other objects. You will also notice that the text snaps in place. The next option is Show Guides at Object Edges. This activates the snapping behavior and the activation of the guides whenever we move something towards the edge of an object or the edge of the document window itself. So with all these options activated, we can snap our text in place around and in the middle of our document, but also on the edges. For this course, you can download the Pixelmator document we are working on now from the website. You can use this document to practice moving around layers and aligning them. There are already guides in place to help you putting each object back in place. You can also try to resize the layers individually by dragging the handles. You see that when I resize one of the objects, purple guides appear. These are the object spacing and sizing guides. They pop up when two or more objects are the same size or the same distance from each other. Also this can be turned on and off in the Pixelmator preferences under Object Spacing and Sizing. Here we find the options Show Relative Spacing and Show Relative Sizes. And of course, as with the guides, we can also change the color of the Object Spacing and Sizing guides. One of the sections we haven't looked at yet is the grid. Let's activate the grid by choosing Show Grid in the View menu. When the grid is activated and we move objects around, you will notice that they snap to every grid line displayed. Using a grid can be very handy when drawing objects with the pen tool. We will take a look at that later in the course. Of course also the grid can be modified. We can for example change the distribution of the grid in the preferences and also the color. You can practice with the different settings using our sample document. While using Pixelmator, you will quickly find out that the snapping behavior is both a blessing and a pain. But it is very easy to temporarily deactivate snapping. Just hold the command key while dragging. Finally, I will show you the preferences that are under the general icon. Here we can choose to show the information labels or not. These information labels are the tooltips we see near the mouse pointer while drawing, selecting or resizing. Show Action tooltips are the labels that display shortly when we, for example, add a new layer or undo an action.
remember that when we created our first document that we got a new document with a white background layer we can change this here by choosing a different setting for new image contents we can either create a new document with a white background layer which is the default a black background layer or a transparent background layer note that a transparency pixel meter is shown as a white and gray checkerboard pattern i will show you quickly what this looks like by hiding the background layer in a document do you see the white and gray checkered pattern in pixel meter this means transparency Finally, if you don't want Pixelmator to use the Pixelmator file format by default, you can deselect the option Open Documents in the Pixelmator file format. For now, I think we will take a well-deserved break by closing Pixelmator. So let's go to the Pixelmator menu and choose Quit Pixelmator or hit Command plus Q. This was it for our first introduction to Pixelmator, where we showed you how to create a new document, gave you a quick tour of the Pixelmator workspace and had a look at the Pixelmator preferences. Remember that you can download the Pixelmator sample document from the TouchPlus website, so you can practice with aligning objects. I hope to see you back for part 2 of this video series soon. Take care.